Hello, hello, and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. This is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories, to transform the world through raw and unedited talk. And today I am pleased, I'm elated to see my brother here on the other side. This yes. is Mr. Tommy Dorsey, uh, of which you're about to find out about in a few moments. Welcome to the Connected Point, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's a blessing to be here with you. Yes. And y'all, I'm excited because guess what? Tommy is running for sheriff. Yeah. Not just at any place. He's running for sheriff in my hometown of Athens, Georgia. Yes, yes. right, yes. We are all so excited about it. Now, um, Tommy, I always tell the connecting point, that's the name of this platform. And so I don't know, Lord have mercy, I've been knowing Tommy's family and him. It's been way over 37 oh, wow. oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. How old are you now, Tommy? 47. Okay, so... Yeah, it's, it's been, been 40 years. I'll, I'll say a little bit. Been 40, it's been 40 yeah. years, yeah. And his yeah. sister and I, you know, yeah. we're friends and grew up together. And so I know this is a good young man. I'm saying young man because you're going to have to be young to run that office. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot I got to fix. A lot I got to do. Yes, yes. Well, Tommy, how do you feel? You know, I feel so excited. I feel blessed. Uh, this is something that's been on my mind for years now. Uh, I retired from the sheriff's department. I did 20 years there. Prior to that, I was with the state, with the RYDC, the Regional Youth Detention Center, dealing with kids. And I knew at that point, that's this is my passion, helping people. So my prayer now on a daily basis is God put me in a situation to help someone. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm going to remind you of something you may have forgotten it. But I don't know if it was two years ago. You said to me, I'm a rough sheriff. You remember that? I don't remember that. You were, I, not, you were buying some barbecue. I bet you remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, okay, I do. I do. Yes, yeah, I you do. do. I do. I do remember that. I do. Yeah. I really do. You were buying some barbecue from TNT Barbecue. Barbie. That's right. Shout out to TNT Barbecue. To yes, my that's Stacy D. Yeah, yeah we were all Stacey. out. You said that, and I said, "Well, you know what? When you do that, I will support you." And I'm sticking to my word. Absolutely, I thank you um, so much. Thank you. I am, I am supporting you. And so, Tommy, let's let's just back up a little bit. What makes you desire to even? take on this challenge because it is a challenge it's um, a challenge it's yeah a i know challenge. i know <laughs> coming being from athens the uh sheriff now is from gary indiana mm -hmm. i don't have anything negative to say about him and i've said for years i'm not going to run my race on any other negativity i'm just going to run on what i can do so being from athens i saw over years how things have changed in our community. Yes. So I'm going to be the man for the job. And I know that I'm going to be the man for the job. I fought it for years. I fought against it. I was like, well, no, I don't think it's, it's for me. I'll just keep working because I was having so much success at the sheriff's department. So I was okay. I was, I was completely happy. Complacent, right? So, yeah, I was complacent. Exactly. So 2020, uh, the current sheriff ran against our Edwards, which was the past sheriff. Mm -hmm. So when he won, I said, okay, our Edwards is out. So now I've got to step in. And if I'm, I told our that I was like, all right, I'm going to take over. I'm going to make you proud of me. So taking up, being up for the challenge has always been something that I've wanted to do to just be the man in the hot seat. Put me right there. Put me in, Coach. I'm I'm well. I'm ready to play. <laughs> well, Tommy, I have to ask you this because we also have young people that watch this. 
do you have any kind of inkling inside of you um, to want to go into law enforcement when you were young, a boy? Wow. Wow. Great question. You know, growing up in elementary, everyone wants to be a police officer or a fireman. Mm -hmm. Towards middle school, you want to be an NFL player or NBA player. High school, you're just lost. You're just trying to get it together at that point. So uh, growing up, I didn't really have an inkling that, okay, I want to be a police officer. But just, just seeing the need for a strong Black man to be in that seat, watching our over the 20 years, you know, I paid a lot of attention to him. Uh, your uncle, Michael Thurman, just seeing the few strong Black men that we had. And I was like, okay, I want to be one of them. So now I'm in that situation. And so growing up, I did not want to be a police officer. Uh, but now I see the need for it. And once I win the election, law enforcement is a field that's really looked down upon right now. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is bring other Black men like myself that are from the hood, as if you want to say, and let's build our city back up. Let's build it back up. Everyone is against law enforcement. So the only way that we can fix it is to join in and do like I'm doing and try to take over. So, Tommy, can you explain to people who may not know, you know, if you're, you've been in Athens for many years, you do know, but there might be some people who are new to Athens. What did Athens look like for you, myself? When we were growing up, when you say wow. different, they need to know how different yeah. it has become. I'll tell you what, growing up, it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing. Everyone knew everyone. Uh, I, if I was acting up in your neighborhood, right around the corner, right up the street from where we grew up at, I would get in trouble for that. So everyone, we had a respect back then that was just undeniable. Everybody loved everybody, seemed like. If I was hungry and I was at one of my friend's house in Nellaby, I can go and get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If I'm at the swimming pool and I don't have that dollar to get in, somebody's going to come and give it to me. So Athens has changed so much. So what we got to do, it, it was almost to the point to even, and it's not, I'm not saying that this was, I'm definitely not looking, glorifying it, but even the people that were doing illegal things in the street were going to say, okay, hey, you're not supposed to be over here. You need to That's be in school. Right. That's so right. So even if, even if I knew that you were doing something wrong, you were going to still chastise me. Even the man that, that was on the corner that was drinking, he was going to say, hey, no, sir, you're not hanging out up here on the block. You need to go back to school or go back down to the hill where the rest of the kids are. So now what we're having is the kids and the adults are one, seems like. Mm -hmm. Whereas back then, the kids were kids and the adults were the adults. Mm, that's interesting. You know, I I come home quite frequently because, you know, that's always home base. And, and Absolutely. my family, all of my family <laughs> um, mm -hmm. reside in Athens, Georgia. And I have seen the shift mm -hmm. right before my eyes. Yeah. Um, and it saddens me. You know, even the neighborhood I grew up in that time, you know, everybody knew everybody. You go across the street, you know, you can hang outside. Everybody knows everybody, okay? But mm -hmm. even in the community where my parents are now, I am seeing activity that just does not exemplify yeah. uh, a healthy <laughs> environment. Not at all. Not at all. And it's it's sad what's going on. Uh it's so sad what's going on right in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And uh, gentrification is, yes. is real. Yes. That's real. That's real. Uh, just to walk through the east side right now, or even the west side, walk through Athens, Georgia, and you see a $300,000 house going up, and everything else on the street is 50000 mm -hmm. So eventually what's going to happen is they're not going to be able to afford those taxes. So what's going to have to happen? They're going to offer you a voucher and you're going to have to move. 
Yeah. And it's sad because we, I, I'm sitting here and I see the community just almost vanishing right before my eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, and I, you know, I ride up and down the street and I'm looking at areas where drugs are just taken over, um, houses set up. I mean, I could just see them. Mm -hmm. you no, know, didn't. No respect, like there, I can drive up and somebody will make you wait mm -hmm. in your car behind theirs yeah. while they do a transaction. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, yeah. and it's just not Athens. It's in, you know, I'm near Atlanta, so it's, it's widespread, but a little town like Athens, you wonder, how did this happen? What has occurred? What happened? Yeah. What happened? Did, did we drop the ball as as um, the elders of the community? What what actually happened? And so I know that it's going to take somebody who is loving. That's mm -hmm. one thing. Compassionate. Absolutely. And invested. Mm -hmm. And so would you say that you're invested in the absolute? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm running this campaign on God, family, and community. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm running on. God can first. Can you break those down, Tommy? Absolutely. That's what I was Break them down. Say. Go start Absolutely. on the top and go Absolutely. down. Absolutely. God first. You got to have God in front of everything that you do. In order for me to make it to where I'm at in these 47 years and be at the place that I'm at, I had to have God first. I know that. I know who my Lord and Savior is. So there's not going to be a check that's going to be big enough to make me sway to think that, okay, let me write you this check and you do this. No, I know that whatever I do, I'm going to have to go before in front of God first. My family. My family is huge here in Athens, Georgia. So I, my family means so much to me. So I got to make sure that I'm running on my family. And without my community behind me, you know, they say it takes a village. So my family and the community, they're that village for me. So when I say family, I'm not just talking about the Dorses or the Griffiths or the Wise or any. I'm talking about family, everyone. The village. Yeah. The, village. the village. And that community. That community is going to be everything that we that I'm trying to get back to. I want everything in the community to go back to where it was, to where the children can go outside and play and not have to worry about getting shot. I want the kids to be able to leave school and have a hot meal waiting on them. Mm -hmm. And when you ask me was I was I vested in this, mm -hmm. I know what I'm facing right now. So it's not just about me. I'm running for sheriff. But once I win, I think Athens is going to win. Of course, yeah. So that's that's my whole thing. When I win, we win. Well, I, I will say this. Um, people know one thing about me. I'm not putting my name behind nothing ain't right. <laughs> I'm, really? yeah. I'm just not. I'm not going to do it. And so I know I what Tommy is doing as sheriff, really, you've been doing it. Mm -hmm. It's just the title now, okay? Um, because it. you have been operating, you're you've been in the community, mm -hmm. okay? You've yeah. been there. You you have answered calls, yeah, from people. You have supported families, mm -hmm. businesses uh, in the community. In other words, you are very present. Absolutely. Okay? You're not hiding behind a, a, a police car or a behind no, a desk. You are very not. present in the community. Can you tell uh, the audience some of those ways that you have been present? Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing that I really admire telling people is that in 2019 and 2020, before I retired, I served over a thousand warrants. And that sounds that sounds real big. But out of those, that thousand warrants, I didn't chase anyone. Mm -hmm. I didn't fight with anyone. 90% of those people called me to come and get them. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I've had I've had people with murder warrants on them. Now it's not up to me if you're going to get convicted, but the only thing that I had to do was make sure that you got from point A to point B safe. Mm -hmm. And if I can assure a parent that I'm going to get their son and their daughter from point A to point B without getting killed by the police, mm -hmm. I was doing my job. I was doing my job. So I just feel like out of those thousand warrants that I served, every one of those people got in, got to jail safe. And it's not just about taking people to jail because, you know, I, I've served warrants. I've arrested people. And I tell people, I tell my students over here, I've, I've took people to jail for the last 20 years. However, it was always to the point, my saying was, Every day, everyone don't need to go to jail. If I had a warrant, if I had a warrant and I was supposed to be taking you to jail, but if you, if I come to your house and I see that you're the only one working in that house and you say, hey, look, I get paid Friday. Today is Tuesday. Can you please come back just to get me? Absolutely. Absolutely. I never want to take anyone away from their family where they can do a lot better. I never want to do that. Well, what that tells me, you know, um, is that if if people are calling you with a situation like that, you must be trusted in the community. <laughs> Absolutely. You must be a trusted face in yeah. the community. And your character speaks for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Character is everything. Integrity yeah. is everything. And... You know, I was raised like that to, to know that yes, my character, yes. my integrity is everything. But what I want, I want the generation that's out there right now to learn that. I want them to learn. It's okay to learn how to tie a tie. It's okay to go and read a book. That's what I want them to. I want them to know it's okay for me to go and be a police officer in my community. Because that book that you're reading in elementary school that's who they're talking about, that police officer that's in their community. And you know, Tommy, you know my heart are the youth. Mm -hmm. um, and and that is something that I'm children, I'm gonna advocate for them until the day I leave this earth. Point Absolutely. Likewise. Likewise. Yes. Yeah, so I want to know what are your plans for let's say rehabilitating youth that are in juvenile and mm -hmm. getting youth to buy into building up their own community again. Absolutely. That's a great question. That's a great question. What I want to do with the rehabilitation aspect is sometimes the, there, there's several different methods that could take place. Mm -hmm. It could be to where, Sometimes the student has that fight or flight method. So I want to sit down with them and find out what's the root behind all their anger. Mm -hmm. that, that anger could be coming from so many different places. That anger could be coming from lack of food at home, not really knowing how to read that book in class. And when the teacher comes around and say, okay, it's time for everybody to read, what's that student going to do? Fight or flight. So what I want to do, and I know that I'm, I'm going off a little bit from the rehabilitation part of it, but this is my vision for getting the, the rehabilitation part in place. If I can do, if I can just see where the anger is coming from in our children, I know that we can take it from there. And once I can do that, we can all build our community back together. Because everyone has a vision, not just not just me. Martin Luther King had that dream, but uh, we all have a vision, and it's not all just about negativity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I know that uh, dealing with children, everyday youth, um, there are a lot of traumatic situations. You know that mm -hmm. they have no control over. Yeah. But they're thrust yeah. into it. Um, and like you said, the anger comes out and then they go into survival mode. We not even, there's another aspect where they're just trying to survive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and you know, I try to look at a person where they are. I try to meet a person where they are and then 
kind of trying to help them elevate from there. But if someone's trying to survive and the only way they see is to sell drugs, rob a store, mm -hmm. what then are, are your, let me say, what are your goals for addressing someone who's just trying to survive? Mm, okay. And that's children and grown folk. <laughs> that's children and you're absolutely right on that. You're right. You're right. So what we have to do is we've got to know our community. We've got to know our, our neighbors, mm -hmm. our children, our adults. We need to know them. So, and, and I'm not saying we need to know them by us just being nosy, prying in their business. We need to know them that if you come out, out of your house one day, Marcy, and I say, wait a minute, something isn't right with, with Marcy. Mm -hmm. Or if you see me and you say, wait a minute, something is going on with Tommy. Let me see what's going on. So we should all have that relationship to where I should be able to come to you and say, hey, I'm on the verge of doing something. And I know I might get in trouble for it. So there's so many different avenues for people to get help. So I don't feel that anyone should be on the verge of robbing or doing any anything negative. I don't or selling drugs. I don't feel that. And the reason that I say it is because there's so many different methods where people can can receive help. And I've I've taken families to uh nonprofits and got them the help that they needed and that what they were on the verge of probably going out selling some drugs or robbing a store. You know, growing up on the east side, I, I grew up around a lot of drug dealers. So, you know, it was it was so it it would have been so easy. And I know how easy it would have been for me to take that left turn. I thank God for Coach Heron. He came over to Patty Hills and said, uh, you're a big guy, so I want you to come to football camp. Not me. I'm a, I'm a mama's boy. I'm the baby. I was born on my mama's birthday. I'm not going to this football camp. But if it wasn't for him, I probably would have been – I probably would have took that left turn rather than stayed on this, this narrow path that I've been on. So what, so I'm, like, hearing, what I'm hearing you say is we have to reestablish trust. We've got to. And then cultivate it uh, in our community until we trust each other with that with our needs and our emotions in the community, we won't heal. Mm -mm. Um, so trust is one. I, I hear that and I totally agree. I also have a concern um, and many others I've heard in Athens are elderly people mm -hmm. who are afraid in their own communities yeah. to take a walk down the street Mm -hmm. uh, even afraid to make that phone call that somebody outside of my house doing illegal things. Absolutely. So how are, how are you going to address that, our, our elderly and, and making them feel safe again um, in their own communities? Absolutely. I got you right here. What, we, what we've got to do is clean those neighborhoods. Up. I go back to it once again, finding the root of the problem. We've got to find the root of the problem. And, and sometimes it's, it's not uh, always someone with a gun. Sometimes it's someone with a drug problem. Sometimes it's just, it could be it could be numerous things. So like you said, the elderly, that's our, I look at them as, as being our stability in our neighborhood. So they should be able to have that, that aspect to where they can walk outside. You know, when we grew up, we had to, we had to respect that our elder. We had to, and you know I tell my kids now. I say, hey, you respect me, so and I'm, I'm a resource officer at the school now. So I tell them the respect that you give me, I want you to give to the teachers as well. Mm -hmm. And they would tell me, well, the teacher isn't you, and I understand that. But at the same time, you still got to respect that teacher. So it comes from from. I know in the school system, some of them, some of my students, some of my 
students that are troubled will say they don't respect me, so why should I respect them? But getting back to, to the elderly, we got to just figure out what is going on in those communities. And we got to get rid of that problem. Once we get rid, rid of that problem, then they are able to come back out. They're able to sit on their front porch, you know, because in Athens, that was a huge thing for us, sitting on the front porch. So that's what I want to see. I want to see them smiling on their front porches on a pretty spring day, waving at people. That's when I know I'm doing a good job. So are you um, open to when you when you take office, are you open to having an open door policy where people can call you up and or, you know, when I say open door, I'm not necessarily walking in your office, but being able to talk with you without having to go through a lot of red tape. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but being able to reach you when, when needed. Absolutely. You know, I will never change from being who I am. Mm -hmm. So the same way that that people have contacted me for the last 20 years, they're going to definitely be able to contact me once I win this election. My number's not going to change. My address won't change. My mom is still in the same place. This is a true story, Marcy. I had people would go by my mom's house and say, Miss Claudia, I need to find, I need to talk to your son. <laughs> my mom, you know, now she's not going to open that door for you now. She's not going to open the door. And she would tell them, I'm not opening up the door, but I'll call him for you. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to have that open door policy to where people can, can contact me. Come and see me. Let's sit down and have a, a cup of coffee together. You know, I don't want to just be a sheriff that's going to sit behind a desk. I don't. I don't see you being there because you, <laughs> I don't see you being I, there. <laughs> absolutely not. No. no, I no. Not. But you know, I got to ask you this and I should have asked you at the top of this discussion, but I did not. For those who really don't know, what are the duties and responsibilities of a sheriff? Because you know, some people, they really don't know. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. The sheriff is the highest elected official in the county. The, meaning the sheriff's responsibility is the jail, safety and se security in the jail. It's the civil processing, it's your court and your warrant division. However, the sheriff has the authority to do everything in the aspect of law enforcement, meaning criminal investigation, uh, homicide, anything. The sheriff has that authority to be able to do anything that's pertaining to law enforcement in a county. Mm -hmm. So me, the sheriff can, if, if an investigation is going on, the sheriff can, or his lawful deputies can take over that investigation. The constitution speaks of the sheriff and his lawful deputies, but for years it's been the police department that has just you know, taking over all of that. And and now don't get me wrong, I definitely want to work with uh, Chief Salters and the police department. I definitely want to work with them. However, I don't want the sheriff's department to be looked down on any longer. Because in the community, people would rather see the sheriff car than the police department. And that, that shouldn't be shit at times. Well, I mean, the thing is... Be that way? Where I people think are so. You think, I think so? so. And, okay, and the reason okay. I think so, the only reason I think so is because when the sheriff comes, he's coming for some type of business. Now, with your police department, you know, he has to investigate. He has to see what's going on. But when the sheriff comes, we either serving papers, serving a warrant, eviction, or, or it's always we're taking care of some kind of business. But every deputy that I have ran across has been super transparent with people in the community. So the community respects them and they know, okay, they're going to treat me right. They're not going to mistreat me over here. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that's how, that's what I've heard in the community for years. I've heard that. I've, no. I've even, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just about to say that I can see that that's that should be a trusted mm -hmm. uh, position to be in. 
And like I said earlier, you will just be carrying a title, but you have been operating in it for quite some time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Tommy, I know uh, this is your first time running for candidacy for anything. Mm -hmm. And I know there are some needs that you have. Absolutely. Um, for the campaign. Mm -hmm. What, first of all, tell the community what you need us to do to support you financially. And if you don't have any money, how can somebody support you? Absolutely. Okay. You can support me. Now, in order for me to run, it costs money. It costs money for me to run. So what I'm thinking that is going to cost is around $70,000. Mm -hmm. That 70000 is going to be for billboards, yard signs, dinners, meet and greets, et cetera, et cetera. So if you don't have money, that's okay. That's all right. I still need you. I need your support. I need you out to vote. If you don't have the money, you can help me canvas neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. You can help me organize routes or or just phone calls so everyone i said it earlier in this podcast when i win we win y'all win that's it that's it when i win we win so i want everybody to be a part of that this is my first time running for office but i know that people have ran but i want the people that are that that don't really know anything about politics to be right here beside me because when, when I'm victorious up on the podium, I want them to feel just as happy as I am. Part of it, yeah. Yeah. So in other words, all hands on deck, people. All hands on deck. <laughs> all hands on deck. We need Absolutely. them all. And Absolutely. Tommy, you have something. Um, well, this probably won't air until after the events. This is Saturday. But you yeah. have a bit coming up. Uh, but what other events after the 18th are you having um, that people can be a part of to learn more about your platform mm -hmm. and, and even come up to you and, and meet you face to face? Because sometimes, you know, you need to feel a person's energy, around, you know, to know Absolutely. you're good people. I can tell you, and I'm yeah. not going to lie to you. I'm not. He's good folk. Yeah, thank you. But you need... So you might need to go around and say, let me let me check him out for myself, face to face. Yeah. So when can they do that, Tommy? Okay, I am having the event. You said it's my air after the event. I do have stuff coming up. I don't have any dates right now because I'm okay. still waiting on uh, obligations on people to tell me if I can rent out to certain venues. I do know I'm, I'm having a, I have so many different events. I have coffee Come and drink a cup of coffee with me. I'm trying to get, either get Jittery Joe's or Starbucks downtown. I have come and skate with Tommy Dorsey, meaning that we're going to go to the skating ring. No, you're not yeah. going back to the we're skating gonna have, ring. We're going to have a skating <laughs> ring. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we are. I we're going to skate with Tommy Dorsey. We're going to have uh, stuff all over the community. We're going to have stuff all over the community. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. That's yeah, we're gonna have stuff all over the community. Uh, every I'm I'm trying to do something at least once a month, and closer to the election into when 2024 hit, I'm trying to do something twice a month. Okay. You know, I'm I'm just I want to be a household name. That way, it doesn't matter who else put their name in the hat. They're gonna know that I'm the guy for the job. Well, there you have it. Athens and everybody else who's listening, and you don't have to be from Athens to support, by the way. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. So, you know, if you want to support, you can surely let me know. Tommy's about to give you some information where you can reach out to his um, campaign manager or whoever's helping with, it, with that. But please, if you believe in the things that we have discussed here today, and you want to build stronger communities, don't let it just be yours. We're global minded. So listen, help. We don't care if it's $2.
We don't care. We'll take anything. We'll take, we take it take with a smile on our face. I know that's right. And we always will take your prayers. Absolutely. Okay. Now, Tommy, can you give the audience a way to contact whoever they need to regarding giving or helping you with the campaign? Absolutely. Email is Tommy Dorsey 6219 at Gmail. My website is Tommy Dorsey for Sheriff 2024. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Tommy Dorsey for Sheriff. So contact, I'll even give you my cell number. Cell number is 706. Don't time up, Tommy, Tommy, we're not doing that. No cell numbers. Don't say no, no you me. you you might regret that one. Listen. Okay. All right. Well, you got the email. Email. Uh huh. You got the email and the Facebook and Instagram. So you can call me on social media or whatever, however way you you know. I'm always around. Always around. So if you ever see me, please feel free to stop me. And like I say every week, if you want to be a part of this discussion with me, you have something that you're passionate about, then feel free to reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com. There's a group on Facebook called the, the Connecting Point for Creators group. It's just a group of creators of all type. We network. There's a point of inspiration every morning. You can get there. Just send us a request to join and we would love to have you. And this show airs on Tuesday nights at Instagram TV, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, just Google it. It's also on KBCN TV on Wednesday nights, Spotify and Anchor. So all we ask you to do is click, like, and share. And believe it or not, if you're sharing this podcast, you're also supporting Tommy Dorsey because Absolutely. the word will spread. Uh, now, Tommy, I thank you so much for sharing uh, your vision for Athens. And guess what? We already claimed it, didn't we? We claimed it. I received it. We already claimed it. for share. Yes, That's right. it. That's now, it. And our words don't fall to the ground, baby. They don't That's feel right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Tommy. I thank you and thank you. God speed and thank audience you. peace and blessings until we get this moment again. Bye bye. Bye bye. I would like to invite each and every one of you to have a discussion with me. Yes, I want to partner with you. Let's have a discussion. What are you passionate about? What do you believe? will inspire others? Is it your testimony? Is it your life experiences? Or is it something that you just know about that you know will help uplift someone and transform the world for the better? If that's you, reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com. That's D-R-M-A-R-C-Y-T-S at gmail.com with your contact information, your topic of choice, and the best day and time to contact you. And someone will contact you to schedule a discussion. All you gotta do is know what you wanna talk about, do the research, and make sure it is something that can uplift and change, transform the world. Let's do this together.